balance some objective goods against other objective goods in order to get the most good possible. Um, but each one of those satisfactions of a desire counts as a positive good. And Kant's rejecting that. Not every subjective satisfaction is objectively good. Somebody want to think of an example? Yeah. Say you break into someone's house and kill them. Right. You're like, All right, feel good. Good. Right. So the desire to kill somebody else may make you happy. It doesn't mean that that's objectively a good thing. And in fact, if that's what makes you happy, you might say, the world would be a better place. Like, from an impartial point of view, the world would be a better place if you were unhappy. That happiness, that feeling of satisfaction, doesn't count as a positive good at all. Not just that it's going to be outweighed by someone else's unhappiness. And as I say, um, Kant thinks that we can see this, I mean, he, like I said, he thinks that it's obvious to everybody as soon as you just think about it from a sort of point of view of an impartial, rational spectator thinking about the world, um, that, that basically, that, look, the happiness of a bad person, like the person who desires to murder others, that happiness is not a good thing. Um, so, look, so what's the condition that makes happiness a good thing? Sometimes happiness is not good, good, objectively good. Sorry, so I should say again, happiness always seems good to the person whose happiness it is. But seeming to be good is not the same as actually being good. Uh, so, sorry, I started asking a question there. Right, so sometimes the feeling of happiness is not good, like if it's attached to a bad person, a murderer, for example. But other times it is good. When is it good? What's the condition that makes this feeling not just subjectively good, but objectively good? When it's a person with a good will. When it's attached to a good will, of course. So a person who wills properly, who gives herself the right ends, whatever they are, and takes the proper means to them, whatever that means, somebody who wills properly and is satisfied subjectively, well, that's a good thing, objectively. Of course, it is subjectively. But that's the condition that makes that contingent good actually good, objectively. Let's take one more example besides happiness. Let's take an example of a knife. So a knife is, a, is an artifact. It's a tool. Um, nobody thinks, I would say, that a knife is uh, unconditionally good. However, in many circumstances, it is good. So let's think about what qualities make a knife good. So maybe we want to say like it should be sharp and durable and well balanced, something like that. Right? So that's what makes a knife a good one. Um, so what makes that, what makes those qualities in a knife be good is that those qualities help us use the knife to achieve our purposes. Right? The things that we typically want to do with a knife, we can do better when it's sharp, when it's well balanced, well, when it's durable. And so a knife's value to us in achieving our ends is what makes it good. Notice that in different circumstances, when we specify more precisely what our ends are, we might have different qualities in the knife that we want. So just if I say a knife, well, what makes it good are the things that it's rational to want 
in a knife for the general purposes that we use knives for, like cutting things. But if we have very specific purposes, like hacking through the jungle, we will want different qualities in a knife that will suit it for that purpose, like being long and heavy, like a machete. And if we have different purposes that we want a knife for, like filleting a fish, there will be different qualities in the knife that would make it good. Okay, so the qualities are going, to, the qualities that make a knife a good one are going to be relativized to the purposes that we have. But now we also want to ask whether the purposes that we have are good purposes, good ends or not. Because a very sharp knife in the hands of a madman, well, on the one hand, the knife is good for achieving his purposes, but those are what? Bad purposes. So we don't <coughs> think it's a good thing for the knife to be sharp when it's in the hands of a madman. Okay. So, what do you think? It is good for a madman to have a sharp knife? <laughs> well, my thought was just like, well, would it really be better if it were dull? Like, yes, yes. Far yeah. more painful, I think. Maybe, actually. But, but look, if we're talking <laughs> about what makes it good is the value it has in accomplishing its ends. Well, I mean, so, so, so then you're questioning whether uh, being sharp really would be helpful to the madman. Right. But, okay, being made out of metal instead of plastic makes a knife better for the bad man. That'll get better. Right. So <laughs> that's something that makes the knife better for him, but it's not better, as it were, for the world. It's not a good thing, objectively, for the knife to be better for him. Okay. So once again, the value of something is conditional on it being used by or related to a good person, somebody who is willing the right ends and um, pursuing them rationally. So the knife doesn't switch between being good or bad as it goes from a good person to a bad person. The knife stays. Well, that's exactly the ambiguity that I'm wanting. Right? The, the knife didn't change, but whether it's a good thing for the knife to be. So look, so, so there's an ambiguity here. Um, when we say the knife, it, when we say it's good for, it's good that the knife is sharp. It's good that the knife is made out of metal. That can help. That's right. So the question is, sorry, so. There's an ambiguity there in how we answer that question. Whether we mean it's good relative to these purposes that that person has, or whether it's just good full stop, good objectively, not relative to those purposes. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing to the fact that these can come apart, that something can be good relative to the purposes that a person has, but not if we adopt a rational, impartial point of view and think about, is the world a better place? Is there more goodness in the world, so to speak, when the madman is better able to achieve his purpose? The answer is no. So when we talk about whether a knife is objectively good, we have to take into consideration Who's using it? What is it being used for? Whether that's whether that sharpness and durability and power is used, is connected to a good person or not, a good will. If it is, then it's objectively good that it be sharp because it will help that person achieve her good purposes. So if you want to cut up your carrots for your salad, you can. If you want to cut up people, you're not so good. If, um, Seems simple. Sure, sure. <laughs> right. And it's not just you that's good, it's that yeah. knife. I get that. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, um, 
three quarters to the will, and uh, a surgeon and a man they both cut up people. Right. But their wills are different. Exactly. So we can imagine, I mean, so we, look, we have to specify it further, but imagine the surgeon has a good will, whatever that means. That means he's rationally and properly aiming at ends that are rational and proper and pursuing them in a rational and proper way. You imagine he has a good will. Well, things that would be useful to him in achieving those purposes are good. Things that are useful to people who have uh, improper, impermissible ends, although they may be subjectively valuable to that person, instrumentally valuable given those ends, because those ends are bad, objectively it's not good for those tools to help achieve those bad ends. Is that clear? Okay, um, so something is good objectively only if it is either directly willed by a good will or is something that's useful to a good will in achieving its ends. Is it attached to a good will in the proper way. Okay, and this is just what he's saying. Um, condition that makes these other things good is a good one. They're related to or used by or willed by a will properly. Okay, sorry, and um, at the very bottom of nine, he says some qualities are even conducive to this good will itself and can make its work much easier. But regardless of this, they have no inner unconditional worth, but always presuppose a good will. It's just what I've been saying. And so a, a sharp knife may, in fact, be helpful to a surgeon who has a good will in achieving his good ends, but that knife is only conditionally valuable. Clear? And he continues, same thing, top of 10. Moderation in affects and passions self-control and sober deliberation are not only good in many respects, so these are things that will help a person achieve her ends, he's assuming. Right? Careful calculation and moderation, not getting too excited or uh, too um, passionate, these will help us achieve our ends. But they're only good if our ends are good, if we will the proper ends. For without principles of the goodwill, they become most evil, and the cold blood of a scoundrel makes him not only far more dangerous, but also immediately more loathsome in our eyes than he would be, than he would have been taken to be without. Okay. Last chance. Questions? Okay. Next point. The first full paragraph on page 10. A good will, he says. So this is a good will. A good will is good not because of what it effects or accomplishes, not because of its fitness to attain some intended end, but good just by its will, that is, in itself. And, he says, considered by itself, it's to be esteemed beyond compare, much higher than anything that could ever be brought about by it, in favor of some inclination, and indeed, if you will, the sum of all inclinations. Okay, so a will being a good one is the condition for anything to be objectively good. And now Kant is asking, uh, is a will a good one?